Hello and welcome to Culture here on 924 News. I'm Odette Grober. Thank you for joining me. Today on our show, we'll talk to a photographer capturing the city of Tel Aviv. We'll hear about the legendary violinist Edward Grach. And learn about the unknown African minority of Iran. This is Tel Aviv, is a photography project capturing surprising, humorous, and poignant moments of the city's life, sketching a portrait of its inhabitants. With me in the studio is the man behind the camera, photographer Aviatal Dayan, who's responsible for this project. Thanks for coming in, Aviatal. Hi, Odin. Thank you for having me. Uh, so, how was this project born? How did you start with it? Um, it started um, around two years ago. I just uploaded a few photos to my uh, personal uh, Facebook page. Yeah. And I got uh, some good reactions, so I decided to make it wider, maybe. Yeah. Right, and keep going out with the camera. Yeah. So, how do you capture these moments? Do you always have your camera on you looking for, for these special moments? Yeah, yeah, actually, um, I do that for a hobby, so I do that uh, uh, during the weekends only. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, my camera is always with me, and uh, you know, I just look for uh, something out of the ordinary. That's what I wanted to ask. What exactly are you looking for? Because there are uh, uh, um, <laughs> there are things that that cry out, uh, uh, take a picture of me. But there are things also that that rely on on your point of view. So how do you know how to look for them? Um, first of all, this is Tel Aviv. It's it's just there. You can see it in every corner of the street. Mm -hmm. um, you can find crazy people um, amazing people people are doing stuff that will you know you just need to take the picture it's not very hard <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's not very hard because it's Tel Aviv if you if you say New York maybe you need to maybe to look for it but Tel Aviv is Maybe not New York. Maybe New York is <laughs> not the not best example there. Yeah, maybe yeah. if you're thinking about exactly. yeah, maybe but Haifa, you have to yeah, go look for yeah, it. New York has it uh, uh, in in uh, buckets. Yeah. Um, how often do you miss the shot? How often do you see something and you're like, oh, just happened? You you couldn't you couldn't get it. Doesn't happen a lot, but sometimes if you see um, a quick moving bicycle with interesting things. Mm -hmm. um, I might miss something, and uh, but it's it happens. You and know? have you uh, uh, found yourself directing your your subjects, or you avoid um, that completely? No, I'm not avoiding that completely. I don't find it uh, bad, mm -hmm. by the way. Um, I think the outcome is what important, but I do it rarely. Mm -hmm. Like uh, maybe. All of my photos you can find maybe maybe three that I staged, okay. and uh, I I don't see anything wrong with helping. I'm not calling that staging. It's just helping the photo happening. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, getting the most out of it. Yeah, exactly. So now it's it changed a little bit over the years, right? You started off doing mainly portraits, and mm -hmm. and you kind of uh, um, drifted away from that. Mm -hmm. How did that happen? Um, you know, the audience is, uh, the viewers change you if you like it or not. Um, you get reactions and people like certain type of photos. Right. So uh, at the back of your mind, if you, you know, in your subconscious, you, it changes you. I yeah. mean, uh, so, you're aware uh, of that uh, yeah. when, when you go out. Yeah, if, if, people, if people like humorist photos, so if I like it or not, I, I will be drawn to it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What are uh, uh, your inspirations? I mean, we've seen uh, street photography in the past. It's not something that's that's uh, um, totally new. Who who do you like? Whose work do you like? I think every photographer that I see influence my uh, my photos in some way. Yeah. But uh, there are I, I can say what photographers I really like. I like um, uh, Vivian Meyer. I like. Um, uh, Israeli photographers like uh, Alex Libak. Mm -hmm. He's very good. I really like his uh, photos. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that every photographer, even one single photo, can can affect me and yeah. change my way of looking at the street. Yeah, certainly. So, yeah. Now, uh, where do you see this going? A book, an exhibition, maybe? Something like that? No, people ask me that, so I might give it to them at some point. Um, maybe I will. Um, I did some 
a small exhibition in a small cafe in Levinsky Street mm -hmm. in Tel Aviv. Um, it went well. Yeah. People liked it. And uh, I might think maybe to do maybe something bigger than that. Great. Yeah. Uh, more on a, on a personal level, this is, as you said, uh, a hobby, really. You, you have a day job ever th thinking of, of trying to make it your, your main, uh, main thing? Um, no, actually no. <laughs> actually no. I really like to keep it you in like, a hobby. You like getting a paycheck. Um, yeah, yeah. This is, uh, you know, I work for, uh, I do that for for the for paying the bills. Right. My work, my day work, yeah. my day job, and this is just a hobby. So, uh, and I'm not a businessman, so I don't know exactly how to do it uh, yeah. to sell my photos or. I just enjoy it as, as, as long as I enjoy it, I keep doing it. It's wonderful and yeah. uh, uh, all of us are enjoying it uh, as well. Gatal, Thank thanks so much for coming in. Thank you very much. Now, Edward Grach is a legendary Russian violinist that for over 60 years, despite the many changes in Russia during this period, has been one of the most prominent classical music figures in the country. The 84-year-old musician no longer plays, but he continues to lead the orchestra he founded, the Moscovia, and above all, continues to teach. During his time this summer at the Keshet Elon Academy in Israel, our correspondents David Gombin, David Yakin, and Daniel Gitman met him, brought back this story. The highlight of this evening gala is dedicated entirely to the violin. It's August 2015 at the Tel Aviv Opera. These young violinists tune their instruments and practice one last time before the evening concert. Their common goal to put into action all they have learned from this man, Edward Grach, a living legend of the violin who will also be the conductor of tonight. They know everything, they've rehearsed everything, and all they need is some luck. President Ruben Rivlin and opposition leader Herzog are also present at this evening celebration of 25 years of the Keshet Eilon Music Center. A thunderous applause echoes in the performance hall with the entering of this gentleman of classical music. 84-year-old Edward Grach's figure is imposing while he stands in front of a group of violinists. The perfect mastery of his orchestra, along with extraordinary sensitivity, are the keys for his seducing of this large audience of music lovers. A few days after the concert, we went to Kibbutz Eilon, not far from the Lebanese border. It is here where we find the maestro who makes the trip for the 18th time. I can tell you that I come here because there are incredible master classes. And as I told you just now, it is the best in the world. And I have many friends here, which is why I always come back. Born in 1930, he grew up in a family of lawyers. At age seven, he discovered in Pravda, the Communist Party newspaper, that Soviet violinists had won a major competition in Brussels. This glory made him want to indulge in violin. I told my mother, buy me a violin. I also want to win this competition. Right in front of our house on Pushinsky Street lived the legendary professor Piotr Stoliarski, who was the professor of David Oistrach. Piotr Stoliarski examined his hands and decided that they are fine enough to play the violin and takes him under his wing. In 1941, the USSR enters the war and the Grach family took refuge in Novosibirsk, Siberia. There, he will give his first concert as a soloist when he was only 13 years old. There were many educated musicians in this period, among them conductors Maravinsky, Snedelinsk, Statvich, and others evacuated from Moscow and Leningrad. Winner of the first Bartok Prize, the Tchaikovsky contest winner, 
and the first violinist of the orchestra of the state of the USSR. Edward Grach has won it all, and according to him, being Jewish in the USSR has never held up his career. Even while the Cold War was in full swing, while other Jews were trying to flee, he continued to represent the Soviet Union around the world, thanks to his unique bow strokes. I was one of the most popular violinists in the USSR. I was the one who traveled the most, across the USSR from all directions. And I was very much abroad as well. I was never forbidden to go anywhere. Today, the director of the violin faculty of the Moscow Conservatory has devoted himself to teaching. French violinist Pierre Frappe had the chance to enjoy his good advice. It is primarily the control of the instrument and the head, but without letting this erase your musical ideas. Grignoter les idées musicales. Edward Grach himself recognizes he is not always gentle with his students. I am very demanding. I'm not a bad man, nor spiteful, but I ask a lot. I place the bar very high in my teaching. I do not want to teach them how to play the violin. I make each of them a real soloist. The seasoned violinist admits he's had an exciting life, all thanks to the instrument. Without a doubt, if I had to start all over again, without hesitation I would choose the violin. I have never regretted being a violinist. The violin is a really fantastic instrument. In a moment, we'll hear about the African community of Iran. But first, here's our cultural recommendation for today. Utopia probably one of the most important elements for planners and architects. After the war, South Korea was devastated and reduced to almost nothing. Architects and authorities decide to work together to rebuild the country according to new modern ideals. In Guacheon, south of Seoul, the National Museum of Modern and Contemporary Art returns to this primordial episode of architectural history. Photos, sketches, models as many documents reflecting an era where there was a desire to introduce a dream element in the urban landscape. Siwoon Sangha, Paju Book City, Heria Art Valley, or Pangyo, the urban complex, all places where architectural intervention left large-scale traces that you can find in this rewarding expo. Daniel Campos is already here in the studio. Uh, hi, Daniel. Hello, Dad. How are you? I'm doing well. You're taking us to Iran, but uh, via Africa. Absolutely. Yeah. We're, we're going to talk about the African Persians or Afro-Iranians, which is uh, quite rare, you know. We probably never heard of them. Never heard no. of them. Okay. One of the most fascinating ethnic groups uh, that keeps holding on to their African culture. Uh, also, they're in Iran as a result of the uh, Arab slave traders who mm -hmm. sold a lot of African slaves to the Gulf countries, and that's how they ended up in Iran. Slavery was banned in Iran in 1848. Uh, let's have a look at a documentary recently uh, made uh, about one of them. Uh, Kam Ibrahim Haydari followed a, a musician from this community. Let's take a look. It's my name Hamid. Hamid Said. I'm the one who's in the corner. I'm the one who's on the journey to the city of Iran. I'm the one who's on the journey to the city of Iran. Looks very interesting. So how uh, uh, how much are they a part now of Iranian society? 
the, according to what many people believe, they are part of Iranian. They had like a famous soccer player that played for the national team. They've had also politicians. They've had. They, they are and part they are of the, Muslim. They are Shiite Muslim, but they continue holding on to their traditions, just like in Cuba. They are Christians, but they continue mm -hmm. to hold on to voodoo. The same here. Many they hold on to many African traditions. Uh, maybe we can have a look also to have a taste of the music, the Zaid Shambezade Ensemble. Where they take the Afro uh, Iranian music all over the world. I knew you couldn't uh, uh, not bring some music. Let's hear it. I thought they were uh, African or Iranian, not Scottish. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, it's uh, great stuff, very interesting. Thanks so much. You're welcome, Adit. That's it uh, from us for today. I hope you enjoyed our show. We'll be back tomorrow with our weekend edition and next week with a whole new show. So please join us again.